I'd like to share a short glimpse into my world off of something that I presented to my work group uh, about my journey with bipolar, depression, suicidality, and all that good stuff. As y'all already know, I have a history, but more importantly, I have a future. I've lived with depression and suicidality as long as I can remember. As a kid, I dealt with emotional baggage of bedwetting until I was 16. I generally hated myself. I struggled in school, more to boredom and self-loathing than a lack of aptitude. My first concrete suicide attempt came when I was about 13 or 14. I survived it, obviously, but the desire to not be alive never left me. When I was 16, I started dating Cindy, my later wife. During this time, I first found myself feeling like there was a chance for a future. Unfortunately, when I was in my mid-twenties, the suicidality returned, along with the decided antisocial side of me. Other than Cindy, I had no real friends and felt alone and like I was going nowhere. When I was around 30, we moved, to, we moved from Muncie, Pennsylvania to just outside of Charleston, South Carolina. A few years later, I went back to college and became an attorney. I thought I had found myself. In reality, I had lost myself down a deep hole. I found that I liked helping people with their issues, but hated being a lawyer. When I was around 40, I sank into a deep depression and gradually became hyper-suicidal. I wrote a long, rambling suicide note and gave God a timeline that he had to either fix my life or I was taking myself out of it. When the day came, I took a rifle out into the woods with no intention of ever coming out. Long story short, I survived, but began my journey in the land of the mentally ill. Over the next few years, I was in and out of the, beha the behavioral health unit seven times and had a course of ECT, electroconvulsive therapy, shock therapy, Think uh, one flew over the cuckoo's nest without the torture. After a while, I didn't get better, but I became better able to mask myself, and no one knew how suicidal I was. After a few more years of this, I came to the realization that I was not supposed to die, but that I needed to live. But why? I gra gradually learned to live again, and that there was a chance for life beyond bipolar. I was on a cocktail of meds that kept me alive, and I had excellent mental health care. I can't say enough about the need to find providers that genuinely cared about me. I still struggle with suicidality, but it had become more of a distant idea than a deep drive. About five years ago, I came to the realization that God didn't want me to die. He wanted me to live and help people. It was around this time I first heard about being a peer, but was dissuaded by a well-meaning counselor at the Office of Vocational Rehabilitation. I held on to the idea of being a peer in the back of my head and continued to work, around, work on Rod. Around this time, I remember saying, F this. I will not live the rest of my life like this. I decided to start trying to live again. I took a job with organization called CMSU at their Decision Sports Center as a peer. I enjoyed the work, but like a dummy, I left for what I thought was a better job. Closer to home, better money. I'd find a decent job, selling liquor of all things at the state store, and did well in the job. I also became more involved in my church and started feeling like there may be a future for me. I struggled, but I had mostly good days and started feeling good about Rod for once. I still wanted to find my path to help people and how I could serve others. After a while there and other jobs and driving as an Uber, the pandemic hit and I lost Cindy to cancer. Losing Cindy hit me hard. I had a few real bad months, but I fought my way out of them. About a year or so ago, I decided I wanted to get back into working as a peer, whatever that meant. 
I sent a letter to CMSU asking if they had any openings. I heard nothing for a couple of months and just assumed they had nothing for me. Then I got a call from the director of the PATH home describing to me what the PATH home was doing and inviting me to apply. I completed the, I completed the civil service application that very afternoon and waited hopefully. After a while, I got a call to take an online test and then to come in for an interview. The interview was the most interesting I've ever had. I remember telling the, the director that the job didn't sound like fun, but it sounded interesting. I got the job. Since then, I'm happy to say that the last vestiges of suicidality have left, and I'm hopeful about what tomorrow may bring. I am now off most of my psych meds. I see my doctor once a month to get a shot, and we're planning to taper that off. I credit my improvement not to my job, but to the feeling I'm finally helping people and that I have come to accept the bipolar as a chapter of my life. It is not my life story. I don't know where the future will take me. But it's my hope and prayer that it will be in a role where I can help those dealing with mental health struggles. Will it be at the path though, my current job? Who knows? But it is my hope and prayer that I'll spend my golden years helping people, not just trying to make money for others. Over the years of my life, there have been many other twists and turns that I'd be willing to share in the future if anyone is curious. I've come now to believe that the best is yet to be. I have a future and a path to get there. And perhaps most importantly for me, for the first time in my life, I like Rod. Thank you.